this is true, notice that all this is, this is equal to the first derivative of your, your f, right? That's what, what that formula is. What that says to us is that if this gives you instantaneous velocity, and this is simply the formula for the first derivative, velocity is just, the, and now we can say it for real, velocity is simply the first derivative of a position function. Now, we might have known that just from this, but now we can say it for real. So this is instantaneous velocity, which is denoted v of t. Instantaneous velocity is simply the first derivative of a position curve. Instantaneous velocity is the derivative of a position curve. Let's do one example just to flush it out a little bit. Do you know anything that's 1,250 feet tall? No, that's 5,000 feet tall. Oh. <laughs> sure, let's say that. 110 stories. 110 stories times. Yeah, that's about right. So let's say this is the Empire State Building. And you're up there, and uh, you're with someone you really don't like, maybe ex-girlfriend, whatever, and you just go, okay? That's what this is. No one likes ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Just kidding, joking. You wouldn't ever push her off the building, right? Uh, Besides, there's fences up there. You couldn't do it even if you wanted to. You'd have to throw her. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be uh, 1,258. <laughs> anyway, just joking. This, <laughs> this is about the effect of gravity at, if you just kick something off a ledge. That's what this is saying. So your, posi your position is starting at 1,250 feet, and you're just going to throw something off. It's going to fall. That's what negative 16 t squared will do for you. Does that make sense? In a vacuum. You know, we, we're not living in a vacuum, this would be in a vacuum. I want to do three things. I want to find the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, the, the formula for that. I want to find out when this hits the ground. I want to find out what's the velocity when it does hit the ground. So three part question. So first part, find V of T. Second part, when hit ground. Third part, how fast? How fast hit ground? <laughs> That's our questions. Can you please tell me how you're going to find the velocity of that position curve? What are you going to do right now? You're going to take the derivative. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Take the derivative for me. You already know all this stuff to take a derivative, so take the derivative of that thing. Velocity equals the first derivative of your position curve, in this case s. So s prime is velocity for you. That's how you would signify that. I'm going to start working on it slowly. Keep working on your papers. Let's see if we come up with the same thing, okay? I'll, I'll do it step by step, but I'll go real slow. That's a square. Sorry.
Have you noticed that a lot of this is just algebra work? Have you noticed that? Mostly just algebra. And you're like, dang it, I passed algebra. What the heck, Leonard? Give me some calculus. Ball's algebra. Okay, by a show of hands, can you raise your hand if you made it down to this far for me? Did you make it there? Good, okay. If you made it that far, you have the understanding for calculus down. You have the understanding of how to use that formula down. The rest of it is just your algebra work, distribution, combined like terms, things like that. So in our case for us, keep on working if you want to. Hopefully you saw why those parentheses were important, right? So if you don't have them, your 16t squareds are not going to go away, and you need them to go away. So if ever you come up with something where you're like, man, I'm not able to factor out an h, you've probably made a mistake. Go back and fix your mistake. That's probably what happened. Did you make it that far? Did you? This side? Yes, good, all right. This side? Does all the good stuff happen? Like it's supposed to? Everything besides an H goes away? Okay, well, that's gone. That's gone. I see only two terms. Each of them has an H. Let's factor the H. Negative 32t minus 16h. Remember, I'm not so caring whether you factor out the numbers. I don't care because you're going to be multiplying them anyway in just a second. So all I really care about you, for you right now is getting rid of that h. Uh, that's the key here because that lets you take the limit as h goes to 0. If you do that, tell me what my... Velocity curve is equal to? What happened to the negative 16? How many were able to find that? Good for you, that's fantastic. If you got that, you got the derivative down. That is the instantaneous velocity at any point. So right now we've answered V of T. It is negative 32 t, where t is the time. That's right. t is the time. And we'll say, I think this is in seconds. So, yeah, gravity should be in seconds. So this is in seconds. Next question, when's it hit the ground? When does something hit the ground? When the position is zero. So when does this pen hit the ground? If this was like a y-axis, I start it six feet, and I drop it. Hits the ground after it reaches a height of zero, right? What gives you height? The first derivative or the actual function? The function does. So we want to know, when does this thing make zero? That's the question. You've done that since your introductory to algebra class. You want to find out, well, when's it going to hit the ground? When does 1250 minus 16 t squared equal zero? When's the height equal zero? That's what you're asking here. Do you see that that's the height, right? When's the height equal zero? Find that one out. Oh, come on. You got this. Solve for t. Solve for t. There's nothing fancy about it, just get t by itself, which means you're going to 
probably either subtract 1250 or I would choose to add 16 t squared to both sides. Next step, you're going to do what? Divide by 16. You have a simple t squared. So divide by 16. What's 1250 divided? I can't do that in my head. How much is that? 78.1225. 78.1, 78 Yeah. Get rid of the square. How do you do that? Square root. Sure. Now, what do you have to do when you take a square root? Yeah, hey, you typically would. However, we're dealing with time, right? So is a negative square, is that going to work for us, negative time? It happened in the past, man. Crazy, no. <laughs> when you're dealing with actual time, yeah, technically you'd put a square root, right? But we don't have to do that because we're, we're always moving forward in time. So we're just going to leave the positive, not the negative. Take the square root of 78.125 for me. 8.84 what? Well, that's rounded. 8.388. 8.388. Okay, 3888. So, however much you want to be accurate here, you can be even more accurate here, just so you know, because you're going to be plugging that number in just a bit. So, you said 8. Point, let's do 39, okay? You said 8.388? So, 8388. Oh, geez. I don't have a calculator in front of me. 8.838? Let's do 8.34 then. That sounds good. All right, very good. Seconds. Because I'm assuming this is in seconds. So, when will it hit the ground? It's going to hit the ground after 8.84 seconds. How fast is it going when it's hitting the ground? Well, this is a combination of these ideas. Do you know when it's going to hit the ground? Do you have a formula for telling you how fast something goes at an instant of time? Right there. If you want to find out how fast it's going when it hits the ground, you now have a function in terms of t and you have a t. Plug it in. It'll tell you how fast it's going when it hits the ground. It'll also give you the direction that it's going when it's hitting the ground. Not shortly after because it's going to be stuck, but uh, <laughs> just before. So how fast? That would be V of 8.84 seconds. That's negative 32 times 8.84. Keep in mind, this is like neglecting the terminal velocity thing. This would be like in a vacuum, OK? So how fast is that going? 282. 282? Negative, I'm assuming. Negative. Yeah. 288? Yeah. 282. That's pretty fast. That says it's falling at a rate of 282 feet per second at the moment that it hits the ground. If you were some sort of an engineer, we, we'd have a, a little bit more complex of a, a thing here, depending on what you're dropping. You'd have wind resistance and stuff like that. Uh, but you probably calculate a basic structural integrity if something's going to fall off of a 1,200 foot ledge and hit something, you're going to calculate so it withstands a forceful impact of up to 